indoor tour. And I am so hoping this is the last one and that in April it will be the East Side tour, etc., etc. Oh, it's so time to get all of these outside. My temperatures outdoors are still fluctuating though. So, welcome to the indoor March tour of what is still indoors. Some have already been residing outside, but here we are. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I still have the Nafert's Alex Poli doing well. Two spikes. One is just now starting to fade. Those blooms are on the out. But this one is still looking pretty good. And next door is Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. Now in full bloom with nine spikes. If a spike with only one bloom counts. This is the deteriorated spike here of my Jack of Diamonds. Yes, I broke it, which is a bummer because I had the female blooms earlier in the season and I was looking forward to seeing the male blooms. Not so, we'll have to wait another year. And then I've got Aurora Hill, still doing nicely, still smelling amazing. Maybe I should say Aurora 2.0 to be specific. I think I'm seeing root tips in the pot, down, roots extending. I'm gonna wait just to make sure I get the timing right. Temperature outdoors has to match somehow so that I can transition her properly into my setup and not lose this one as well. Here are my three stooges. Still doing well. I think we're coming to the end. One of the pouches is looking a little bit, yeah, wrinkled. Maybe that's just normal, but they have been open forever and given me much, much joy. And I still have my golden peacock down here. Still being a little bit protective of it because of the repot. Normally it would be outside by now, but not under the circumstances. So it stays inside in my indoor blooming alley. I will never know, I guess, at least not this time around, what the bossery has in store with these kind of buds that never either developed or in nature they serve another purpose, which they can't do while in captivity. And you can see that there's a new leaf growing. And I have a little Dorianopsis Elmhurst here. It was sent to me in error because of Orchid Garden Poland. I wanted a Dendrobium helvigianum. No, they sent me this because they thought I needed it more seeing as they didn't have a helvigianum, so they didn't give me a refund. Well, I didn't want an Elmhurst, but this tiny little seedling has been plotting along and it's grown quite a bit in the last two and a half years that I've had it. So, it, I mean, you know, sometimes orchids come into your life for a reason. I still haven't figured out why this one came into my life, but that's okay. As it's doing well, it can stay. Here's my little Lundii, Lelia Lundii, with the new growth production going a little bit mad, which I think is wonderful. Still waiting to see what it does with the roots because this setup is not long term because it is a little bit of a rambler and I have all this under wonderful foliage going on in the same pot. I need to find myself a nice square pot or something like that. But because of its size and its growth habit, I'm not sure my little square pots would do it any good whatsoever. I still have time to figure it out. When the roots grow, I need to take action. Look at the state of my Leonis here. We now have two spiders in this pot. <laughs> but it's growing really well. I'll get a better angle, just a second. There we go. Beautiful new big leaf coming. The spike never amounted to anything. It would have been a first time bloomer, so I'm gonna boil it down to that. But it's growing magnificently and eventually Mr. and Mrs. Spider, you are going to have to go. 
making itself a little too cozy in there and we need to do a little bit of a housekeeping there with you guys you can stay and start all over again but yeah that is intense they've been very busy and then Mona Chica in the background there is also doing really well spike is extending a bit dangerous now but I'm being very careful when I'm handling the orchids on these shelves you have my little Aclandier this is a work in progress to get it established in the grow method that I want it to be. A bit of maintenance needs to be done to pick off some of the moss there. But we've survived the cold winter in this setup. Yes, that was important. Here's my Plectral Minthus Caudatus. I love it. It's settled in nicely into this setup. I think I've got a grip on the black spotting. It's not something that's gonna take the orchid down. This is environmental issues. Maybe one day in a care collab, we'll go into that in depth. And all the spots there is me with my copper fungicide, just in case it is a fungus and just to keep it in check before she goes outside. Bulbophyllum doesn't look like it suffered any stress after the repot, the cleaning and the scrubbing. Holding on to the water nicely, that Akadama. And the same with my Gojo Fukurin. After that care collab, it's doing all right. I don't see any deterioration and that leaf is extending. Happy days, I've got Kiyoguchu Happy Field in bloom. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and she smells so good. I'm telling you, the perfume of Ise Miyaki. No doubt. Beautiful, beautiful. And in the back, I have a few of the Rapiculus Lelias that I am just babying a little bit. They grew roots and then they dumped their roots. So I brought them inside just to make sure that they don't get too stressed out. And the zip is back there as well. The new growth is extending and the little root is doing fabulous. And then I have my Eno Bulbum over here. Or, well, no, it's Dendrobium now. In, I call it Eno Bulbum still, sorry. Munificum has not woken up yet. Here is the Aurantia Plameum Dendrobium that I got from the Orchid Room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. That growth is extending nicely and the roots are doing well as well. And back here, I have my little Angraecum didieri. Very slow grower on the spike front, but it it's still green. It's hard to tell because it's still tiny, but it's still green. And back there is the Contortisepalum bulbophyllum. And it has aborted that new growth, which I'm not surprised after being manhandled in such a radical way. Waiting to go outside is my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Now on the pedestal, a little bit closer to the light, seeing as only late afternoon sun hits this corner. No more direct sun here. Yay, the sun is rising in the sky. All good things happening weather-wise outside. Now we just need the temperature to conform. And here's the Bayensis. There is no sign of a new growth or anything there, so it's still getting babied. And my little Zogo Vivian is chucking out buds. we get some blooms there. I brought my Polysema, no, sorry, my Aberrants crossed with Polysema into this little location here. It was sprayed with the garlic solution as a repellent once again to make sure that I don't get these pest issues that were taking my dens down last year spring and down here i have two telumnias that are probably not going to be long with me i'm just keeping them safe and away the one on the right had a scale on it and yep that one's from schwerter and the one on the left i don't know why that one went down actually hang on a second that probably went down because of my fabulous lack of fertilizer regime instead of being gentle i was nuking them and over here, 
are the two catacetony that I got from the orchid room and one is just waking up. Let me see if I can get you down without breaking any roots on my crest wood. See that? That is wine delight. Just popping open with a new growth. And then here is the catacetum. Algovirons still asleep. They've been getting regular flushes. They're due for another flush, but I don't keep them too wet over the winter. But that is a good sign. I'm hoping this little guy will follow suit very soon. Let me take you down here now, lower shelf. Well, the lights are normally on at this time of day, but for the sake of filming, I've switched them off. But here's Lindley Kupowitz becoming beast mode, which is also very welcome. And I brought in my Rupestris little Rupiculus Lelia because that only has two leaves and three bulbs. And back there is my little Speciosum, my Paf Spicerianum, and Gloria Nargle. The little Philippinensis is doing really well in its little dome there. That is turning out to be a great little solution for it. High humidity, airflow, and it is growing, people's super happy about that. That's working well. Twinkle White Fantasy is the opposite. Look at that. I'm staying stubborn. I know I'm going to clean it up soon, but I am staying stubborn. Either you make it in the setup and then show me some roots and then I can probably take it down a size, clean it up properly, but give me some roots and then we'll probably put it straight into Akadama. But I'm not touching it right now until I don't see that some of the, even if the growths are very, very weak, that one there, if that produces roots, then we can start this one all over again. The Red Fantasy is doing well. It's starting on all the new growths. Here's the Maxima Alba, also from the Orchid Room. Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. Look at those roots with the Akadama together. And there's a new growth, a nice new growth as well. The little Bellatulum back there, the piece that we had in a video, I saw another little root number developing, which is now protected by a piece of Akadama. Here's the other Maxima Alba that came with a piece we just saw. And look at it, it's extending little roots. It's very weak, but there are the roots are going and growing into that media. Very excited. And then my Leopoldii here, you can see through the camera maybe. There it is. New growth on a Leopoldii seedling which is a massive achievement for me because the counterparts here from Schwerter aren't looking so good. But that one is a great new growth. Super pleased. Here's my Ostheocletus bathulifera, which just recently dumped the leaves from the back bulbs there, which was a shame. I thought I could hold on to them. But it's also still sleeping. Leptotus bicolor, no spike, nothing of the sorts. And then we have Cattleya dawiana variety aurea right here. Yeah, that one's new to my collection as of summer last year. But there's a new growth coming right there. And what else have I got? What else have I got? These two seedlings back here are doing really well. They are Lelia hybrids. Cattleya hybrids, sorry. Two growths have matured, are in the process of doing so at least, and the roots are growing. We did a repot on those last year. They did really well in the seedling cups, and then they got bumped up into this pot, and they're still progressing. I'm very happy about that. That's great. I don't know how long it'll be until we see blooms there, but anyway. 
Let's go up. The very sad little Lelia Gracilis here from Floralia last year. Ah, I've already lost one piece. There's a tiny new growth starting on this piece here. So that is going to be interesting to see if it has the strength to make it. And here is what it should look like when it's all healthy and nice. This is also the one from the Orchid Room. Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. This one's coming along really well. And there's a new growth back there. Look at that. So we got this new growth throughout the winter. And this new growth is starting now. That's awesome. Here are my Shutano and my Setsusan, my Neos, and here is the Mr. City Eye growing a new root right there. I would like to get that root down. I don't want this thing to come up and out of the pot. We just did a repot on that to get aerial roots in, but it is still doing okay after being manhandled. Another little Leonis that is starting on a new leaf. And look at this. Orangus fastuosa. We're going to have five blooms on her. Now, because she's so tiny and still quite squished in the pot, the spurs on this one won't come out. And here I've released the spurs from the media. But the blooms will be clean because no water is coming on them. Last year, the blooms weren't as clean because of having had her on a mount and then spraying the mount, water got on the blooms and then I got a little bit of a black frame around them. Now we're going to have some clean ones. And after this little tour, indoor tour, my Sophronitis coccinea bloom is going to be nipped off so that my coccinea can recover. Here's Lelia crispa. Took a year to mature this growth. Now I'm waiting for the roots on this growth because it's still not fixed and stable in the pot. But the orchid hasn't deteriorated while it was growing this new growth. So whatever small roots that I had when I potted it up, they were functioning and they did their job. So excuse the dust, but I hardly, hardly touch this one except when I take it out to give it a flush. But the crispa now, I'm waiting roots on this growth, one year to mature. Here's a Leopoldii cross that I'm also trying to get through simply because me and Leopoldii, we have a love-hate relationship, but this is a cross and it is now at least growing some roots. I managed to get one growth, but this was last year. So since then it's not done anything except producing roots, which is a good thing in my books. Here's the Cattleya Maxima. Alba, I believe it is. Cerula, sorry. This is the Cerula from the Orchid Room. Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. And look at that. The roots are happy. And there's a new growth. And it's a bigger growth than what it was before. I can just tell by the size of that growth. It's going to be a nice one. Next size up. And then, and then I have my Cattleya araguayensis right here. Still asleep, not doing much. Gets a flush every once in a while. Zobenicofia humbertiana has found its happy place. That root down there is a happy camper. And so am I. You can see it's starting to come out of the worky top prongs there. <laughs> very, very pleased. Finally got this one sorted out. Quick look at my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. Still not outdoors because not hot enough at night yet. I don't know if we're going to get blooms this year, to be honest, because of the cold winter that I've had. But I know that it is doing okay with the exception of this one growth here I had to cut off. The tip from the cold nights that we had in January did not survive including the tip of this new growth right here, but that's only the tip of the growth. 
the buds come out from the apex. So if I'm going to get buds or blooms or whatever, then that's where they're going to be. Again, excuse my spider friends here. All right, forgive me. In the winter, they are super, super welcome. This beautiful no ID on Sidium is positioned strategically right by the terrace door because it brings in all the beautiful fragrance and permeates it throughout the house. Super intense, lovely, delicious, fresh, and makes for a nice air freshener in the home. And then the two Panaricas, Iono Centra here on the left, and Brasa Vole back there tucked in, also had a copper treatment. I didn't like the look of those black spots. It could also just be cold temperatures, but yeah, it doesn't hurt it. At least there's something done to prevent it. Both of them have had also the garlic spray because I was seeing some signs here that I didn't like. There's nothing wrong with the underside. This is not the normal symptom of the pest that I talk about, but it got a garlic spray nonetheless, seeing as soon they're gonna come outside. And I have sheaths, but there's nothing in them at this point in time. Maybe later it will bloom. And then my area hyacinthoides is here, looking a little bit worse for wear. I had a growth rot because I was treating it for mealybugs with the garlic spray. And these growths are very sensitive when they are fresh and new. They're very fleshy, thin and flimsy once the leaves are established, they're fine. But yeah, I went in with alcohol and ruined the apex of a new growth. Oh well, live and learn. It was that or the mealybugs would take it out. No win there. And then down here is my Hawaiara lava burst still hanging on. Some roots are extending into, into the scrubby pad there. I have not given up. And I think I would like to do a care collab for a Hawiara lava burst. Because this is not exactly a great specimen to learn from, but there is something to be gathered. Some intel can be gathered by seeing this. And there's my new one, Peguatum. Still asleep, and boy, I should not be watering it much because those little bulbs don't like being watered. So I missed around the edge of the scrubby pad. I just missed around the edge. When I get those bulbs wet, I feel like they go squishy very fast. So staying away, staying away, letting it do its thing. And when it wakes up, it should be happy to be in its new home. That's the plan anyway. One look at my little Lelia perinii down here. We are in root production mode and we have been in root production mode for the last three months. This orchid appears to be doing nothing for the longest time on the surface, but down in the pot, it's getting down. These roots honestly are taking forever to grow and extend, but that is the way of the perinii. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me on a quick indoor tour. Lots going on, lots not going on, still waiting for a lot to happen. But I'm really, really hoping this is the last time for the winter of 2021 that we're going to have to be indoors for these orchids. Please remember, if you see any orchid here that I've mentioned and you have that orchid in your collection, Take the opportunity, leave me a comment, please, that you have the orchid, or send me an email. My email is in the description below. I'm always, always keen and on the lookout for Care Collab partners. So let me know if you have any of the orchids you've seen here. Forgot the Paraphalonopsis labocensis. Mine is still a seedling, but it's doing okay. That's all I can ask for it. Yeah, so get in touch with me, please. My email if you see an orchid and you would like to do a care collab with me thank you for watching once again 
Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care, everyone. Bye.